what's going on everybody and welcome to episode oh good grief what is it episode 114 of the book binge where uh this one's going to be a little bit less structured than normal pretty much mostly solely for the fact that I, i'm recording this literally like uh, oh man like 12 hours before the video is supposed to go up and with my internet upload speeds that means i'm recording this editing it and rendering it and then it is uploading immediately so i haven't had time to do proper notes for this but the concept of this video was i was gifted a few books by the author stephen graham jones uh over the course of i, I think it was all all three of these came in 2022 from a couple of my friends uh maybe maybe all of them were from patrick i don't recall for sure but those were the only good indians flesh boy and night of the mannequins and so i planned earlier this year hey for october for spooky season i'm going to read the stephen graham jones book so what ended up happening was uh, and i'll explain this a little bit further as we discuss about the books directly there's also a fourth book now included in this video mapping the interior which i bought for myself just recently and just finished reading like five minutes ago what i'm going to do is i'm going to do kind of like what i did for my spooky season or my uh yeah my spooky season reading wrap up last year where i talked about the haunting of hill house rebecca and uh american psycho i did brief reviews of all three of those books and kind of wrapping up my spooky season reads i'm going to do the same thing here except they're all four books by the same author although two of them are really just novellas with that being said let's just kind of go into the video and discuss these books in some sort of order i'm not 100 percent sure i guess i'm probably going to go in the order that i read them i suppose even though i feel like that's wrong but that's just the way i'm going to do it for now the very first book that i read early in the month was night of the mannequins now this one is one that i actually think i've grown a little bit more fond of over the time since i finished it i i think the experience that i tend to have with more books is i read a book and i experience them for what they are and then a little bit later down the line i enjoy them a little bit less than i did immediately upon finishing this is a book that like i said i think i've grown a little bit fonder of over the time since i finished it that's because i understand what it was doing a little bit more than i did when i read it where at the time that I finished, I was like, this isn't really what I was expecting it, and it was okay, I guess, and that was basically my thoughts on it. But uh, I, I really liked the concept of this story. It was uh, fairly dark and kind of depressing in certain ways, while also being a super goofy concept and super goofy idea that morphed into something very real and has a surprisingly nuanced uh, understanding and take on the ideas of like psychopathy or sociopathy or just insanity in general in the way that it could manifest in say a serial killer and it, it it was just kind of a fun concept it didn't end up being what i thought it was going to be and looking at it now i kind of understand why and i kind of like it better for that but i wanted it to be something a little bit different at the time and that's that's basically what i'm going to say about that the next book that i read I only really attempted that was flesh boy i only got halfway through this one before i admittedly dnf'd it i'm not one to dnf books and i uh this is only the second book that i've dnf'd up to this point like purposely and really it's the only only the first one that i like actively chose it's the the other book that i've dnf'd up to this point i didn't choose to do that i kind of put it on pause and then i've not returned to it and don't think i will this one I purposely put down because it was boring the heck out of me and nothing really mattered to me. I, I don't typically have an experience where I'm reading a book and the characters don't matter, the setting doesn't matter, uh, the, everything doesn't really work for me. Like nothing about this was really clicking, even to the part of the setting and the spatial awareness. Like just the, the, the descriptions of the space of the setting didn't make sense to me and so I couldn't even really imagine things in my head and even the stuff that was definitely meant to be pretty gross in the book didn't garner any reaction and that's that was indicative of how, of how disconnected I felt from it so this one I didn't actually read this month I only read 100 pages out of what like 200 or something like that yeah I, I read barely half the book or so before I put it down it was like this just isn't working for me I'm gonna move on because if I continue and spend the next couple days to finish this book i'm just not going to be in the mood for reading for a week or something like that so i did choose to put that one down the next book 
that I did read and I actually got through the whole thing and I enjoyed it a lot more than I think I was expecting it than I was expecting to and more and I, I suppose in a way that my friends were sort of expecting me to out of all of these books my friends expected me to enjoy this one the most and I did the only good Indians is a book that has garnered much ire amongst circles that I kind of uh, I spend a lot of my time in at least like on discord and whatnot uh, and basically all of Jones's books are rather mixed in reception. There are people who really like them, there are people who really don't, but for the most part, they're just kind of middle of the road for a lot of people. This one is more on the end of you really like it or you really don't for the most part. Now, uh, my, my thoughts on this, and I'll explain this a little bit more in a separate review, kind of like I did for American Cycle last year. I had it in the, you know, in the spooky season reads video but i also did a dedicated review for it this is going to be the one of these books that i do a dedicated review for because i want to talk more about it specifically there were some kind of strange decisions made in certain parts of the book i didn't love the climax i thought the climax was a little bit over the top and kind of meh after a really r surprisingly impactful climactic sequence at the end of part two part three overall didn't work for me even though I liked the resolution, but I liked the first two parts, which are like the first two thirds of this book quite a bit. So I definitely liked a lot of this a lot more than I disliked, and that's for sure. So whenever I think about the book, I'm like, okay, well, maybe this was only three stars, even though I rated it four on Goodreads. But whenever I describe the reasons why I enjoyed this book a little bit more than I didn't enjoy the book, I remember, yeah, this, this is four stars. I really enjoyed parts one and two, and I thought the resolution was good. It was only the, the ultimate climax, the majority of part three, that I thought was pretty, eh, didn't really matter to me, but I didn't hate it necessarily, so it didn't, you know, I, I don't have, I don't have any reason to hate this book, actually, and it also has some fun stuff that I haven't read anywhere else that I thought were rather enjoyable. If you don't like basketball, you might not like this book, but because I, I, I love basketball. It's probably my favorite sport, especially to watch. Even the basketball stuff in here didn't bother me. I actually wrote, quite liked a lot of it, except for the climax. Um, but yeah, I actually quite enjoyed this one. So that one surprised me a decent bit. But it was the one that people said I probably enjoy the most. And I did, uh, for what it's worth. Even more than uh, Mapping the Interior. This was one that I think, based off of the concept, seemed interesting to me. And based off of the way that some of my friends described it, I thought that it might either be my favorite of the books or my least favorite of the books. And unfortunately, I think it's closer to the latter. Um, I really liked the first 15 pages of this. I thought it had a surprisingly good and meaningful take on sort of grief and a kid dealing with loss. Uh, just the, the descriptions of this narrator going through and doing stuff in the house to you know, try to convince himself that he saw his father or trying to figure out where his father could have went before he disappeared and ultimately died. And I thought the first 15 pages were really touching in this way. I was like, wow, that's actually really deep uh, for this kind of narrator to be doing, but it seemed so real and I really liked that, but ultimately it didn't live up to uh, the potential. The rest of the book was m kind of meandery in ways that I didn't expect based off of the one paragraph on the back of the book, you would expect for this to go a different way or at least go the direction that it went a lot sooner and ultimately didn't until the last like 20 pages for some reason. And I didn't really like the end pretty much at all. So unfortunately, I think this was my least favorite of the, uh, my least favorite of the three that I finished because uh, Flesh Boy was obviously my least favorite because I cared so little about it that I actively DNF'd it when I don't tend to do that with books. So those were kind of like my brief thoughts on these four stories in terms of the recommendation. I, su I suppose I could do a sort of ranking, but I think you might know the ranking just kind of inherently based off of how I described it. Only Good Indians was my favorite of them. Then Night of the Mannequins, and I actually like this more than I rated it. I might go back and rate it four stars on Goodreads because thinking about it more, it's like, yeah, I actually liked that a bit more. I remember it more fondly. Uh, then Mapping the Interior... And obviously the one that I didn't finish. But for the recommendations in terms of how I uh, would recommend these in a typical review, I would say Night of the Mannequins. If you're interested in trying out Jones, I think this is a very good spot to start. Uh, it'll kind of get you familiar with his style uh, and 
the kind of kind of the way that he tends to write the way that his narrators tend to speak and the, the voice that they use and this is probably one of the things that i like least about jones is generally his prose it's not my favorite even if it sort of works for his narrators i don't love i don't love his prose but this will get you kind of familiar with his style and kind of the goofy concepts that also have very serious undertones to them it's a kind of good balance of what he tends to do at least in my experience with these four books it's really short it's only 135 pages and if you look at the size of the font on these pages and just how small they are like let me grab a normal size hardcover so let me just grab an example and show you the size of the book it's really really small so not only is it not very many pages the pages aren't big so it isn't much of a at all I read this in one day, just like I read this in one day as well. So most people could read this in just a couple of hours. And I, I think it would be a good starting point for Jones. And it was for me. And I definitely enjoyed it a little bit. Uh, Flesh Boy, it's hard to give a genuine recommendation for this because I didn't finish it myself. But I have a couple friends who really liked it. And one of those friends, Allie, who read this and really, really likes it. I actually very surprised by I don't. I understand why she of all people really likes this book but there are a couple people who really like this but it's it's the Jones book that of most of my friends they read it and they're most more so just confused for the record I did read some comments on this uh, then even including some spoiler tag comments about like the ending and I'm just more confused about you know what was discussed about what happened in the ending than I was about the half of the book that I read so I'm kind of glad I didn't finish it because I don't think the ending would have satisfied me based off of the conversations I've had with Patrick especially who's kind of the Jones expert of my friend so I don't recommend giving Flesh Boy a try but some some of my friends might say it's unironically good but I think it is a not good uh, it's just boring and I didn't connect to anything so I, I I I can't find any reason to recommend it personally mapping the interior uh, is also kind of a weird one because I have a couple friends who actually really like this one, uh, including a couple people who gave books like The Only Good Indians a try and hated it and tried this and that it kind of gave them what they were missing or what they wanted from The Only Good Indians. And I personally don't see it. I was mostly just confused by this uh, and did not think it lived up to the potential at all. The first 15 pages were really cool. Of course, it's hard to say don't read this because it's literally only 100 pages once you cut out. The fact that the first 10 pages of the book are just front matter and it actually starts on page 11 and it's only goes to page 108 so it's less than 100 pages um it's a really quick read so it's you know worth giving a shot for that reason seeing if it clicks for you it didn't quite click for me but uh i'm not entirely sure i could describe the reasons why it might work for somebody because i was confused for the majority of this admittedly uh, and even I don't think my feelings on this one will change over time like the way I anticipated they would for Night of the Mannequins. Either way, like I said, it's a very quick read. You could give it a shot if you're interested, um, but and especially if you think the concept sounds interesting, because I did think that the concept sounded interesting, but it didn't quite work for me, unfortunately. So I don't necessarily recommend it, but if you want to give it a shot, it's not like you're wasting very much time on it. And as for The Only Good Indians, this is the one that people are going to be probably the most uh, curious about. I don't see what the eye of the book is about. I commented on this. I don't see why people hate it. I, I see the things that people wouldn't like. There were some things in it that I didn't like. There were some things that were a little bit over the top. There were some strange decisions made. There were some aspects that I didn't enjoy. And the ultimate climax, the climactic scene of the book as the majority of part three i didn't really like very much but there was nothing about this that i thought was worthy of like unabashed hate so i don't necessarily recommend this in terms of like yeah everybody should just go read it because it is very strange but i i can see why this this is a book that falls everywhere on the scale with people reading it any of the stars from one to five i have i people on my goodreads friend list who have rated it every single one of the ratings and i don't know if there's any other books in my list except for maybe the road by cormac mccarthy that are that way um at least of the ones that i've read this is the, probably the most controversial or the most uh, mixed 
in terms of the feelings i i i liked it i i genuinely did so if you if you, if you were to read say night of the mannequins and or mapping the the interior and you were to enjoy jones's style and kind of the things that he's doing i don't see why you shouldn't give this a try uh but just go into it knowing that a lot of people really dislike it and that plenty of people enjoy it a decent bit that it's not a terrible book uh even though some people really hate it and just go into it you know the curiosity of how you might feel about it because that's kind of how i went into it i was like okay well i know some people who don't understand why it gets hate and i know some people who absolutely abhor this thing's existence so where will i fall and i kind of read it with that question in mind and i think if you go into it maybe you'll enjoy it but uh, it's not going to be a full-fledged recommendation if there's any of these four books that i recommend it'll be night of the mannequins to give you a taste of jones's style and because it is kind of fun and goofy while also touching on some pretty dark and serious uh thematic material that is surprisingly compelling for a 130 page novella so yeah that wraps up my discussion on my spooky season reading with stephen graham jones i'm gonna i'm gonna go ahead and end this video very quickly and very soon because i don't want this to go on and ramble too much longer because i need to get this edited and rendered tonight plus make the thumbnail so that'll take me the rest of the evening probably well into bedtime so thank you guys for watching let me know what you thought of any of these books if you read them let me know what you think about jones as an author up to this point because i've read these four books and i'm generally really mixed i think the only good indians is the only one of these that i think it came out more positive than negative although i could say maybe the same for the, this i i enjoyed them but i was still you know in that mixed deposit that 3.5 ish star range where it could go either to three or four so none, none of these i really liked and overall liked enough to say i couldn't rate them three stars or less so yeah, I, I don't know if Jones is the author for me, but I still had a decent enough time re uh, reading these books. And thank you to the friends that gifted me the books. And I actually lied earlier. I had forgotten. Uh, Celine gifted me this book. Patrick gifted me Flesh Boy and The Only Good Indians. So thank you to the friends who gifted them. But thank you guys for watching this video. I'll be back in the next one.